Okay. We're all here. The uh, regular meeting of Windsor Heights City Council will come to order. Roll call. Susan Scaries. Here. Joseph Jones. Here. Lafredo. Yes. Mike Jones. Here. And Teresa Harms. Okay. Yes. Please join me in the uh, Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Move to approve the agenda. So moved. Anybody want to second it? Second. Thank you. Roll call. Gary's. Yes. Joseph Jones. Yes. Lafredo. Yes. Mike Jones. Yes. And Harms. Yes. Motion to open the public hearing on ordinance 20 06, amending city code 60.10.07 to remove section 21 related to unimproved services, surfaces, and removing private property language from section 22. Open. Roll call. Gary's. Yes. Joseph Jones. Yes. Alfredo. Yes. Mike Jones. Yes. And Harms. Yes. Ed, you want to briefly comment on that? Yeah, just a quick reminder. This is just uh, fixing some language in Chapter 60 with regards to private property parking that really belongs in the nuisance ordinance. Uh -huh. And uh, the next item uh, for public hearing is the second half of that, which amends the definition of uh, an improved surface in Chapter 174. Um, just uh, as a recap. Thank you. Any public have any comments on uh, this ordinance? Hearing none, uh, motion to close. All moved. Second. Roll call. Gary's. Yes. Joseph Jones. Yes. Lafredo. Yes. Mike Jones. Yes. And Harms. Next item, motion to open public hearing, or excuse me, consideration the first reading of ordinance 20-06, amending city code 60.10 to remove subsection 21 related to unimproved surfaces, and removing private property language from section subsection 22. So moved, Dave. Second. Second. Roll call. Curious. Yes. Joseph Jones. Yes. Mike Jones. Yes. Lafredo. Yes. And Harms. Yes. Next item is a motion to open the public hearing on the second half of this, which is ordinance 20 07 to amend city code 174 to further define services allowed for parking on private property and add parking prohibitions for vehicles parked on private property for the purpose of sale. So motion. You get a second on that? Okay. Um, Anyone so have any comments from the public? We need to do a roll first, Mayor. Okay, roll call. Uh, Scaries? Yes. Joseph Jones? Yes. Lafredo? Yes. Mike Jones? Yes. And um, Harms? Any comments or any? So, um, go ahead. If there's no public comment, I'll go ahead and just ask a question. Pardon? I said if there's no public comment, I'll go ahead and ask a question. Go ahead. There's no public comment. Anyways, I just want to verify or Chad, I'm the first the more that I look at this and think about it, I'm wondering if we need to define a surface and maybe not, or maybe so. And I just want to throw out there if somebody wants to put a paving stone or a brick underneath of the tires. I don't think that that's what we're talking about. And I just want to make sure that that's, well, at least that's what I'm, what I'm talking about. 
And so I make sure that that doesn't say this or we're not letting people think that they can put down a couple of pavers in you know, the area next to their garage and a bunch of grass and call it now a paved area or a, that this is an acceptable space. Well, that's a good point and question that I had not thought of. And actually, um, you know, the, the way that this is worded, I think that uh, there's probably an opportunity for that argument to be made because we did remove the wording about contiguous to um, a driveway based on previous council discussion. I'm not real sure how we get to um, the uh, goal of what you're saying without that contiguous wording. Um, Chad, just maybe a suggestion. Uh, could it indicate the uh, dimensions greater than the dimensions of whatever is being put on that? It'd probably be best um, if we table this and let me do some research on on how to get to where you're trying to go, um, if that's a concern, because I, I wouldn't want to make a comment that I hadn't researched and, and was comfortable with. And out, like I said, outside that contiguous thing with the driveway, um, I would need to, to figure out wording on getting to that. Uh, Let's see what some of the other people do or how they manage that. I just want to make sure that somebody's not just throwing a couple of pavers down, getting their tire on and that and calling it good because that's not what I'm comfortable with. Or Very good. One at a time. Yeah, I understand what you're saying, Therese, and I'm, I'm concerned that after you mentioned that and thinking through this, that um, there's nothing that's that's in that code. And, you know, part of this is to to clarify that so there's not ambiguity in it. And um, I, I can definitely see that being somebody's position at some point without some change. So um, with, with that said, like I said, it'd probably be best on the 174 portion. Of course, that doesn't affect the Chapter 61. But on the 174 portion, maybe table that for a meeting and give me a little bit of time to research it and, and come back with some alternatives. All right, thank you. Is there a member? Is there a member? We've only heard that. Go ahead, Mike. Well, I wonder if, if Therese or somebody, whoever made the motion, uh, puts forth an amendment to that motion. Why don't we just go ahead with closed public hearing and the next item, which is consideration of the first reading, table that until we've done some more. I also, I also received a message um, that basically said um, kind of what Teresa was saying. Um, the person is worried about um, the danger of leaking oil into the groundwater uh, due to not being on a fully paved service or surface. Um, there's no ambiguity in a concrete or asphalt surface. There just isn't. Um, people with leaky, oily cars are going to put tires on brick pavers and you're going to have oil leaking into the ground. Um, so that's this person's concern. And keep in mind, you know, based on the previous uh, discussion with council, there was a desire to to uh, allow the pavers or bricks or that type of, of a surface, uh, but that, you know, yes, uh, something could get through those surfaces and, and bleed through. So um, if there's a desire by council to, to make that only concrete or asphalt where it's um, uh, a solid surface without, you know, the ability for things to permeate it, then we would need to change that. But that's not what the discussion has been as we've been working through this. And um, so it's designed around our previous discussion. And I agree with you, Chad. I am the one that brought up the, the paver and the issue um, with, you know, parking and having the concrete um, going basically from the street to where you're going to park. But I just wanted to make sure that this person's comment was 
you know, read and addressed to. Absolutely. And, and I, I would just say that perhaps we should revisit that to a solid slab uh, so that there's no question that there's not leakage possible. So I think if we- You know, one, one thing about it is even if we were to enact a, a regulation that it be a concrete or asphalt uh, surface that you know, is not impermeable, that does not uh, necessarily stop the runoff of whatever from that surface, uh, barring uh, proper curbs and then where that goes. And if it goes into a, a uh, sewer system, which we, I don't think we really want in the, the storm sewers. Uh, so I, I understand where their concern lies, but I, I don't know that you can prevent that regardless of whether it's a concrete or asphalt surface or a, a paving surface. It's just a matter of where it's gonna run off whether it's gonna go three or four feet or, you know, it can get through those cracks. Um, I, I just don't know how you control that 100%. And I, you know, if you start requiring curbing and stuff like that, then we're getting way into the weeds on, on uh, a project. And then where that, that runoff has to go is a whole nother topic. Just one, one thing. That would always be true driveway, ahead, Mike. Too, wouldn't it? Go the ahead. Same, the same thing would be true with driveways. Well, driveways, you know, in essence, are uh, typically, you, of course, when a, a property is built, I think they try to grade the the property above the street level, and uh, you know, you do have a little bit of runoff from the driveways down into the the storm sewers uh, through the curbing. So, to that aspect, yes. If you're putting in a, a parking surface in like a backyard, um, you know, then we're back to the contiguous part of it. And then you're going to have to have some grade uh, considerations in order to make the, the runoff go where it needs to go. And if, you know, that happens to be through the, the driveway and down in the storm sewer, there's a whole lot more that goes into that once we start getting into that conversation than where we're at now. One of the things to consider that we talked about before was that by virtue of using, for example, the pavers underneath there, uh, particularly with trailers, which was a lot of what our original discussion was, uh, you also then have permeable situation where you actually drain it into Mother Earth and let it take care of itself, as opposed to trying to be on a asphalt or concrete surface and running it back out or still running it off onto the side of the uh, ground. Either way, you got a problem. My suggestion is leave it the way it is. Let's go with it. If we have to make changes in the future, we can. Oh, I, I really think we should table this and let go back and make sure that we don't allow people to just put it on pavers. That was one of the original discussions. Was to put I was going to say, wasn't that the, the exact discussion that we had? Yes. No, then, I, what, I'm, what I'm suggesting... I'm not okay with somebody slowing down two pavers under each tire and that being acceptable. If you want to create a driveway or a, um, a, a pad to be able to put your trailer on, then that all out of pavers or whatever, then that's fine. But not just to put down four or eight pavers uh, and put them underneath your tires and it's not acceptable. That's not acceptable. I'll do some research on on some wording that gets to the the heart of the you know just throwing down a paver and having a tire sitting on a, a one foot by one foot paver and ensuring that that's not where we're headed um, and then bring a recommendation back with some clarification for that. Okay, motion to close the public hearing. So moved. Second. Roll call. Gary's? Yes. Joseph Jones? Yes. Lafredo? Yes. Mike Jones? Yes. Ann Harms? Yes. Okay, now motion to, for item D to table it, which was a consideration of the first reading of that ordinance. Move to table it. Second. Roll call. 
Carries? Yes. Joseph Jones? Yes. Alfredo? Yes. Mike Jones? Yes. John Harms? Thank you. Next item is public forum. It's time set aside for comments from the public on topics of city business other than what's on the agenda. We will not take any action. Please state your name and address no more than five minutes. Anyone from the public? Hearing none, next item, yes. consent agenda. Move to approve. I- Hello. Oh. Go ahead, Susan. I think there's somebody trying to talk for public forum, maybe. Whitney, we got somebody coming in. I was trying to get in. My phone was muted, even though the meeting was unmuted. Okay. Hello? Hello. Who have we got? This is Darren Series, 1441 oh, We're not getting you very had... well. Hello? Yeah. I just wanted to state I have a concern with the last few meetings have been brought up in discussion about um, the salary study job classification thing. I, as a citizen, I have a concern that when the council finds the number of errors in a study or report, and it seems to kind of be pish poshed off by the city administrator who then continues to say they feel they've done great work, even when, again, this is being brought up by the council, it, it makes me feel like we have a, a city administrator that doesn't truly value what our money goes to. Um, so that that kind of bugs me that someone in, in the face of, of errors that were brought up in a meeting still stands firm and says that this was quality work. If that's the level of quality that someone's willing to accept, then I think it would be fiscally irresponsible for my tax dollars to pay that person's salary for another day. Uh, looking at, on their Facebook page, it seems that we have made an offer that's been accepted to a candidate uh, if we could get them to start tomorrow, that would be my suggestion. Uh, just not not happy that someone's disregarding people trying to be fiscally responsible with citizens' money, citizens' money, city's money, and things that we're doing. That's all I had. Thank you. Thank you, Darren. Anyone else? Okay, next item is consent agenda. Motion to approve. I make a motion to remove 5G uh, key elements payment from the consent agenda for further discussion. Second. Second. Roll call. It's curious. I think Mike Lafredo is talking, maybe he's muted. Uh, I need to do the roll. And the motion. Motion to remove item G for further discussion. Motion to approve and a second roll call. Gary's? Yes. Arms? Is that a yes? yes. Um, Lafredo? No? Mike, you're muted. We can't hear you. Can you hear me now? Yeah, is, yeah. That a, is that a yes? Uh, no, it's a no. No, okay. And then Mike Jones? Yes. And then Joseph Jones? Yes. Okay. Next item then is the payment of claims item number G. Uh, Dave, can I go back and just ask a question about the one that we uh, tabled? That payment? What's the plan to never pay that or what? No, we're the, the, what we tabled was uh, the other deal on uh, uh, the, what do you call it, the pavers and so on. This is an open item right now. Approve the payment of claims 
on item G. So oh, I move to um, uh, approve the claims with the exception of key elements. And that's what I made the motion for, correct? Yes, that's what I assumed it was for. I'm going to be talking about key. So I guess. You removed all of G in your, when you, I think okay. when you did it, didn't you? Yeah, I tabled item G. Do uh, you want to rephrase that to well, we've already, take out the one on key consulting? We've already voted on that. So now we need mm -hmm. to move through the payment of the claims with the exception of key elements. Okay. Second. Who was the second? I'm sorry. I'll be the second. Okay, roll call. Okay, hold hard. on. Oh. Are we then we going to have another question about whether or not we're going to pay it? That's the question, I'm sure. Why don't we have a discussion about it? So back to Mike's question, are we just never going to pay? I don't think that that's my expectation. I just would like to receive some answers. And the last time we received, I received statements that we would, that uh, Mark would make a, an attempt with Key to have a phone call to work through our questions um, and to have whoever is involved or whoever would like to be involved in, um, into that phone call. And we haven't had that. Well, well, are you asking to direct the city, interim city manager to do so? I'm I think we did that last time and it still hasn't happened. I guess I don't recall that. That's, that's what was said last week or at the last, the July 6th meeting. We ended it with um, Mark saying, I said my piece. I'm happy to set up a call with Key to get the questions addressed. Whoever wants to be on the call can be on the call. I'm happy to set this up for everyone. Okay, I think I recall it now too. Okay, I'm gonna ask one question. Whether or not we are happy with what it was, we still have an obligation to pay for services rendered. Now, question comes up is, okay, do we approve it for payment and move on even though we're not satisfied with it? Or do you want us go on and on and on about it and end up in a uh, suit that will cost us significantly more with the attorney fees. Dave, I don't think that, not to speak for anybody else here, but I don't think that was the point of the conversation. It was that there was a promise made that the council members who had an expectation to have a conversation that would occur prior to us actually voting to release the funds. And I don't, I don't think that occurred and that that's what we're waiting for. I think that's what we need to wait for. Okay, then that's my error for not following through on that. I believe though, Mark, there was a conversation and that's what resulted in that last letter about the uh, payment. Yes, they sent their description of their understanding of the issue, but apparently that is not what people are looking for. So, so we will get a call if that's what people want. Thank you. Okay. That item will be tabled until next month. Motion. So moved. Okay, I'm, wait a minute, one thing, I'm confused. The last motion I have the table on was to approve all payments on the claim list except key consultants. That motion was made by Harms, seconded by Scaries. So in order to pay the rest of the bills, we need to have you all agree to that motion. That's correct. Okay. Okay, so I'm gonna call roll, Mayor, if that's okay. Go ahead. Okay, um, Harms? Yes. Skiris? Yes. Joseph Jones? Yes. Fredo? I'm gonna pass on that one, Travis. And Mike Jones? Yes. Okay, so we can move on now. Consideration of second reading of Ordinance 20-05, adding Chapter 30.11, Unbiased Policing Policy to the Windsor Heights Code of Ordinances. Second reading, motion to approve. So moved. 
Second. Second. Roll call. Gary's. Yes. Joseph Jones. Yes. Lafredo. Yes. Mike Jones. Yes. And Harms. Next item is, do we want to consider going to the third and final reading of that same ordinance? If we do, I'll entertain a motion. So moved. Second. Roll call. Gary's. Yes. Joseph Jones. Yes. Lafredo. Yes. Mike Jones. Yes. And Harms. Yes. Next item is consideration of resolution 2020-95 city administrator contract. Mr. Motion Pro. to approve. Second. Discussion. Roll call. Scaries. Yes. Joseph Jones? Yes. Lafredo? Yes. Mike Jones? Yes. Ann Harms? Yes. Next item is consideration of pay request number 3 2020 College Drive Improvements. Okay, bro. I'll move. Roll call. Okay. Uh, Scaries? Yes. Joseph Jones? Yes. Lafredo? Yes. Mike Jones? Yes. Ann Harms? Yes. Next item is consideration of pay request number three on 2020 streets improvement. So moved. Second. Roll call. Gary's. Yes. Joseph Jones. Yes. Lafredo. Yes. Mike Jones. Yes. And Harms. Yes. Next item is consideration of pay request number one the Walnut Creek Bank Stabilization Project. Motion, Motion to approve. I will second. Roll call. Gary's. Yes. Joseph Jones. Yes. Lafredo. Yes. Mike Jones. Yes. And Harms. Yes. Next item is consideration of resolution 2020-92. Resolution closing. The event center due to COVID-19. Motion to approve. So moved. Uh, discussion? Um, so I'll speak to this and uh, made the motion to approve, but um, I don't, the governor has not taken any additional action. I think that I would actually entertain um, the next resolution, which, um, or the item G, which is uh, allowing for refunds, um, I would go ahead and leave it open. Um, and if people want to cancel their events up until the governor would then um, further close or minimize uh, the number of people uh, in facilities. I think the governor not taking any action is exactly the problem. I think that's why we have to. Let me ask this, it, it, including in that motion is uh, closing the CEC? This is the motion to close the CEC. Okay. And, and, okay, right. It's also the dog park, park and Colby Park playground, correct? Or is that a different? Yes. yes. Okay, so I don't support those at all. Um, there's not very many people that go to the park. Um, at all um and i've taken my kids there and people are respectful and um i think you got to have an outlet also i don't see any of the other communities in the metro um taking action to either close their facilities their parks um their dog parks I, so um at this time I also have walked out there by the dog park to see how many people were out there and it was, everybody was kind of socially distanced away from each other. The dogs were out running. Um, the playground, I saw maybe a handful of kids running on the playground. Um, I guess I, I really don't think that the, the dog park in Colby Park should be 
closed down. I think that that's kind of something that we need to allow kids to be able to run around there. They can use hand sanitizer. Um, I just worry about kids that are cooped up, you know, and what are we going to do with their energy? And I feel bad for parents that are like that and also dog parents like that. Um, I did ask if uh, we could receive notice on what other communities were doing as far as the dog parks, the closings, um, the park closings, and I didn't receive any information. I know that Des Moines dog park is still open and I drove by a Clive uh, playground today and there were kids on it. I don't know if that means it's actually still open or if kids were just on it. I, you know, that's debatable. I, th I think it kind of, uh, for consideration not to be being proactive or um, or not with regard to this spike in, in the virus. I guess I'm not so concerned about what Des Moines or Clive does. I think I agree that the outdoor spaces are fine to stay as is for now. I, the the enclosed space of the community center was what would concern me in terms of keeping it open. But the other two, I think people are, like Susan said, actively using them in the sense that they want to get their kids a different place and out and moving. And I think that's fine, at least for now. Correct me if I'm wrong, but isn't this just closing the community center not the other parts? No. I'm looking at One, resolution. Two, three, four. It's four down. Yeah, it's it's all three of those things. So I, I would I whatever the wording may be, seeing as how I either made the motion or the second, I'd amend mine. Um, well, I draw my mo that motion. So I think I would okay. motion. So I'm gonna withdraw my motion. And I will withdraw mine as well. And I would make a motion to pass resolution 2092, but remove the language with regards to the dog park and Colby Park playground. I second that. So I have a question. Does that also then include the pavilion or not? I, I think the community center is the building itself and not the pavilion. I consider the pavilion to, to not be a part of that. I agree. I, I think it's outside space and that's different than inside. Granted, I would still vote to keep it open, but I'm not going to rock the boat on this too much. Okay, so we've got a Whitney resolution. Or, can we get clarification from our staff on how they view that because if they're they intended for that to i understand we can tell them otherwise but i just want to make sure that we're all on the same page and that staff understand that if you are making the motion for the cdc that that doesn't include the pavilion walton you want to address that or the ballpark or any of those rentals yeah, uh, Ms. Lafrito just specifically requested um, the community center, the dog park, and the playground. So we put those on there for discussion. It wasn't our intent to close the, the ballpark or the uh, pavilion. Thank you. So, Mike Jones, your, would you, the motion you made was just to close the community event center, correct? Correct. The CEC proper. Okay. And we had a second on that. Yeah, I second it. And roll call. Gary. Yes. Joseph Jones. Yes. Alfredo. Yes. Mike Jones. Yes. And Harms. No. Okay, no. The next. Go ahead. You were you gonna say something, Trish? No, I just made sure he got my vote. No, he looks like I. I want to make confirm he got my vote. Yeah, I got it. Thank you. Next item is consideration resolution 2020 
the waive fees for the pavilion for the Heartland Youth Choir on October 25th, 2020. So I'll move to approve this, but I'm going to extend it through December 31st of 2020. I'll second that. Roll call. Curious. I just know what I'm voting on. I'm, I'm a little confused on this. Is this just the resolution waiving fees for the, pavi the pavilion for the Heartland Youth Choir, or is it for everybody until December 31st? I'm so sorry. I, um, and I can uh, change my motion, which was, I was thinking we were on the, I read it and I was thinking this is for the, um, for the rentals. Um, so I apologize. This is for the Heartland Youth Choir, and I'll just this. I apologize. I was one step ahead. Just wanted to make sure I knew what I was, I, that I didn't confuse myself. I got ahead of myself. I apologize. Okay, so we don't need the 1231-2020, just waive fields, fees for the Pavilion for Heartland Youth Choir on October 25th. Thank you. That would yes. the motion to approve? Yes. Okay. Roll call. Carries. Yes. Joseph Jones. Yes. Lafredo. Yes. Mike Jones. Yes. Ann Harms. Yes. Next item is resolution 2020-94, resolution allowing refunds for the community center rentals due to COVID-19 concerns. So moved. So. Um, so I would second that. And Mike, I'd ask you to consider if we can extend this through December 31st um, for people to be able to get their refunds so we don't have to keep revisiting this. But I think that this is something that we'll continue to in encounter for a period of time. So we could just be proactive in that way that allows people to be able to plan appropriately through the year. I can accept that uh, amendment to it, yes. Any further discussion? Roll call. Gary's. Yes. Joseph Jones. Yes. Lafredo. Yes. Mike Jones. Yes. Ann Harms. Yes. Next item is council reports. Susan, have you got Mr. anything? Mr. Mayor, uh, just for clarification on that last one, do you guys not want to have um, these refunds brought to you on a case by case basis anymore? You just want us to refund them until the th uh, December 31st? I think you can give updates and that would be appropriated or appropriate, but you're already, I mean, I think if, as long as people have concerns about COVID that we'll continue to honor that request if they're not going to be having their events. Sure. Okay. I, I don't speak, for, but I think that's our intent. I just want to make sure I was hearing you right. So sounds good to me. Thank you. Council report, Susan? I have nothing. Joseph? Nothing for me. Mike? Well, i just like to point out, uh, if you haven't read it, look at the accomplishments that are listed for the police, number one. Uh, I mean, these are really interesting to me. Uh, a female was sitting on the edge of a bridge with her feet over, and Officer Johnson interceded and, and talked her off and uh, responding to a domestic fight. And Officer John re responded to a, uh, where a female was found deceased and he stayed with the family to console them. I just think those are really commendable acts that uh, certainly if I wasn't on the council, I wouldn't have known that. And then with regard to the public work staff uh, about the grants from the Metro Waste Authority, with a concrete pad, um, the tree giveaway, those are little saplings. Uh, I know Des Moines has done that in the past. And so I think that's that's good. And congratulations to Dalton on that one. And then I would go to the communications thing. And I mean, I mean I'm just kind of amazed at the amount of social media contacts, whether it be Twitter, Facebook. Instagram or whatever, uh, 
I mean, the message seems to be getting out, and, and that's great. Uh, so, and uh, Whitney uh, doing that work. So, yeah, I just think that's uh, pretty impressive. Thank you. Hi, John. Mike, just, uh, sorry, Mayor. Um, Mike, just to let you know, we actually have a handful of awards that we're sitting on waiting on a, an in-person council meeting. I may not be able to do that with the time it's taken. Um, I know I've got uh, a couple of life-saving awards on the fire side as well as on the police side. And then uh, Officer Johnson will be receiving a meritorious service award uh, for his work with that uh, female sitting on the overpass that morning. He did an excellent job. So um, those are all sitting on my desk. I, I prefer to present them in public and uh, recognize the the big deal that they are, and hopefully we can get back to that at some point. So, yeah, I'm, I'm just, uh, yeah, I that, that's fine, Chad. I, I think uh, it's just. I hope other people read that, read those things, uh, in the community, and uh, because it's pretty impressive when we oftentimes will criticize uh, our public safety employees or our public works people or even uh, the uh, communications that occur, and. Uh, I think they're pretty darn good right now. So, anyway. Mike Jones. So, regarding the grant that was obtained for the um, the dumpster, more or less, is that going to be um, placed where it current? Well, where it used to be before they tore up 69th. And I suppose that's a question for Dalton. Milton, did you hear that question? Sorry, my internet kind of chopped out. Can you say that again, Mike? The the grant that you got for the the um, recycling the cardboard. Is, so is the is the plan to put that slab there where it used to be? Right. Yep. So we've got it in a temporary location while the street was getting redone, and while I was waiting to hear back on this grant. So it's actually dug out right now. If you want to go down and see where it's going to go. Right, okay. on like Wednesday. Okay, good, great, thank you. Mike, you got anything else? Nope. Reese? Yep, um, uh, Dalton, I saw him working on it today. I think that's gonna be um, a great spot for it. I've been down to dump it several times and seen it full and empty. And so um, I know that I hear from folks all the time how much they appreciate having the opportunity and really from within the region. So. Um, real quick, Metro Waste, we met Wednesday. Um, we got an update on the new MRF that's going in in the Grimes area. So things are um, on track with that and uh, going well. So again, another provide service really to the Western suburbs that hasn't existed in the past. So excited for when that'll um, uh, be up and, up and running. Um, and then real quick, um, another note, Dalton. So the um, I appreciate the project updates in your report, the uh, Walnut Creek uh, um, stream uh, stabilization. So I did get some questions from residents when um, the work was happening. I think people were a little surprised about the number of trees that came out in that um, time. I will say, um, because I'm on there about every day, that um, it does look really good. So your point, they did, they did a nice job. Um, I was through there a couple of times, probably not properly um, when they were working on it. Um, and the team was really nice and very receptive um, and, and very helpful. They left the, um, um, although it's kind of tore up over there, it looks like maybe a flood went through at this juncture just because of the grounds pretty tore up. Um, they did a nice job cleaning up and um, leaving it in a, in a pretty good space. So just kudos to that contractor for a job well done. Yeah, I appreciate that. I'll, I'll pass that along to him. He's, he's really proud of his work, so he'll appreciate hearing that. Yep. Mark, have you got anything you want to say? Yes, just one thing. <clears throat> we have made applications for the City Small Business Recovery Grant Program. The Economic Development Committee will have a meeting next week to review these. We haven't set the date yet, but we'll do that in the next day or two. And I expect that approval of the recommended applications will be on the next agenda. Thanks, That's Mark. Ed, yeah, you got anything else to say? 
I do not. Dalton? I've got a written report in the, the packet there. Just let me know if you got any questions. Whitney? Okay. Next item is closed session pursuant to Iowa Code 21-5. Discuss strategy with counsel on matters of presently in litigation or where litigation is imminent, where its disclosure could prejudice or disadvantage the position of the government body in that litigation. Motion to go into closed session. So moved. Second. Roll call. Roll call, Travis. Uh, Scaries? Yes. Joseph Jones? Yes. Alfredo? Yes. Mike Jones? Yes. Ann Harris? Yes. 